Hi folks, Sean Beckett here from North Branch Nature Center and I'm going to show you how to upload observations to iNaturalist using a web browser on your desktop or your laptop. Now if you're using a smartphone or tablet this will look a lot different so I recommend you check out the other tutorial that we've made for mobile devices. So first things first we go up to the top right corner where it says login and my information is already in here since I'm already a user but if you need to sign up for iNaturalist you can do that right here. Um, once that's done you put in your information and hit login and you'll be brought to your dashboard where you can uh, go and find your observations you can see other uh, news that pertains to your observations other people making identifications to things you have already posted um, instances where people have added your stuff to projects, whatever. But we're going to go up to the very top right, right here where it says Upload. We'll click on Upload, and here we can either drag or drop photos in to this panel, or we can just click Choose Files, and you can select all the photos on your computer that you want to batch upload. Now, my process, generally, since I take most of my photographs on a camera rather than on my phone, um, I'll put my camera's memory card into my computer, I'll um, download all the photos that I want off my memory card and put them in this folder on my desktop called iNaturalist Uploads, and then when I'm ready I will select them all and hit open. And here we go, we have a workspace that's been created for us that has all of the observations that we want to submit. So we have a few different pieces of information that we need to give to every one of our observations. We have to give each one a species name, we have to give each one a time and date, and we have to give each one a location. Now you can do these as one big batch, or you can do them individually, um, depending on the nature of your observations. So let's start with species names. Now the important thing about iNaturalist is um, that you don't need to know what you're looking at down to the species level. If all you know about this is that it's a moth, then that's fine. You can just type moth and you can click on butterflies and moth. And now we've categorized this as a butterfly or moth. Once you submit this, somebody else from the iNaturalist community will see this observation and they can refine that down and say that, oh, this is in this particular genus or this, this particular species. I happen to know that this species is a moth called the infant. So I'll type that in. And the first hit that it gives me is this infant moth here. You'll see that there's a lot of different choices that it gives you. Now you don't, whenever iNaturalist gives you a whole bunch of choices, you don't just want to pick whatever thing looks the closest. You want to be um, careful about what you are uploading and you want to be identifying things at whatever taxonomic level you're most comfortable with. So for instance, this one here, um, when we click on this, iNaturalist is going to look at the picture and try to um, take a guess at what it is that um, the picture is of. In this case, iNaturalist thinks this is a bittersweet, and its top choice that it's giving me is American bittersweet. However, that's wrong. This is actually not a bittersweet, so you don't want to go and just pick whatever um, looks best from the list you're given. Um, because biologists are going to be better at being able to identify these things than the algorithms on the computer. So I know that this is a viburnum, so I'll just leave it at viburnum. I'm pretty sure it's viburnum opulus, but since I'm not positive about that, I'll just leave it at viburnum and continue on. Similarly, I know this is a willow, so I'm going to, I could either choose to put this in the evening primrose family, which I know it doesn't go in, willow family, that's narrowing it down, and I happen to know that this is in the genus Salix, so I'll click there. This bird is a common grackle, so I'll type that in, and then, you know, whenever you type something in, make sure you then you're clicking on whatever is in the drop-down bar that's associated with it. When you see the name become capitalized and a picture go up next to it, that means that iNaturalist has tagged that observation with the species in its species catalog. Okay, now another interesting technique you can use 
is if you have multiple photographs of the same thing, you can combine them together into one observation. So for instance, this picture here and this picture here are both of the same speckled alder bush. Now you never want to put up multiple observations of the same organism. It's fine if you see five different red-winged blackbirds, it's fine to put up five different observations of those, but you don't want to put up five different pictures of the same red-winged blackbird and call that five different observations. In this case, these two pictures are of the same organism. So I'm going to click and hold here, and I'm going to pick this whole thing up and drag it and drop it on top of that. And now you'll see that this, what was two observations, has now become one, and both pictures are associated with that observation. And I'll give it a name. Okay, and that's how we identify species. Now let's look at date and time. So if you're using your phone or using a camera that, that you program with the date and time, then iNaturalist is automatically gonna look into the metadata of the file and try to pull out a date and time that it thinks is correct for the photo. You wanna make sure that these are actually correct, so give them a look. In this case, they are. But if they're not, you can just click that open. You can change the date and you can click on this little clock to change the time. Next up is editing the locations of these, and this is something you have to be pretty careful with. Now, if I were to edit one location at a time, you would click on location and it would pop up a map and you have to then zoom in to wherever that observation took place. And, um, and you can see how that would be very time consuming for each one of these observations if you have a hundred different observations. However, all seven of these came from the same nature walk in the same quarter mile stretch of road. And so I'm going to go ahead and just give these all the same location. Now you can just select all of them by holding shift, click, uh, clicking the first one, holding shift and clicking the last one, or just drawing a box around the ones that you care about. And now you can edit over here in this panel, you can edit the species name, the dates or the location as a batch for whatever you have highlighted. Now, of course, we don't want to edit multiple species here because these are all different species. However, they all have what I'm going to say are the same location. So I'll click on location. And now I'm going to go to the location where this observation happened. And I can get some assistance by typing in Berlin, Vermont. That will zoom in pretty close. And you'll see that suddenly there's this red circle. This is our GPS location with our accuracy bubble around that. So sometimes you have to um, kind of work with this thing to wrestle it into the position that you want. I'm going to make this nice and small. Then I'm going to continue zooming in. I'm going to take this. I'm going to place it over the location where all of these observations happened, like this. So all seven of these observations took place along this road at various places along it, and so I'm just creating one location with an accuracy bubble around that entire region. So I'll hit Update Observations, and now you'll see that each of these observations has been given that same location. If I click in, you'll see that that circle is right there. Now descriptions are optional, but if you want to put in a description, you can add in more information about the behavior of that bird, what it was doing, the context in which you saw it, whatever might be useful to help somebody else in the community know more about what you're looking at and maybe help them identify it. Now let's say I want to add all of these observations to a particular project. Um, like say we're doing a BioBlitz or something like that, and one of the requirements of the BioBlitz is that you add your observations manually to that project. Well, you can click on your observations, highlight them all, go to projects, and you can type in, let's say, Vermont Atlas of Life, and now they've been added to that project called Vermont Atlas of Life. We're not gonna get into projects here, that's for another time. But that's all there is to uh, uploading observations. We have all the data entered on these seven observations, so we'll go up and hit Submit Seven Observations.
And then once those are finished loading, it'll bring you to this screen here where you can see the observations that you've just made in a list with all the other observations that you've made in the past. If you need to go in and edit these observations for whatever reason, you can just click on one and it will bring you into that observation and you can click edit here and be able to adjust any of the information that you've already submitted about this. If you need to edit a whole bunch of them at once, like say you got the location wrong or you want to add a group description after the fact, you can hit batch edit and you can select the observations that you want to edit and you hit edit selected and then you can adjust them all in one big batch that way. But that's all there is to uploading observations to iNaturalist. Good luck and have fun.